Another day, another beer. It is now day six of the 24 beers of Christmas. Without further ado, let's take a look at the beer of the day called Chabanel. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the can design. The actual name of the beer is actually called Silo, which is what's something that holds a bunch of grains in it. And the name of the company that made it is Chabanel. It's a Montreal Pilsner. But what's interesting about the can is it's also in the shape of a silo. It's a minimalist design. This is the front of the design. It's just a ladder. And if uh, you've seen a silo before, oftentimes there's a ladder to go to the top of it. Or the whole concept of the can is that it's a silo. Anyways, that was boring. Let's just open the beer. And the pour, I'm sorry about this, but I only have one hand and the other one has to hold onto, oh God, I spilled beer everywhere, Jesus Christ. If you look at the color, it's slightly cloudy, which is a little bit atypical for a Pilsner. I believe Pilsners are generally more filtered beers. And a lot of foam, that's my doing. So because I'm impatient, I'm gonna just drink it from the can. I personally like Pilsners. They're somewhat of an underappreciated beer. They're somewhat associated with mass market beers. So if you're a beer snob, sometimes they just, they don't like Pilsners. They oh, look at my IPA, look at my sour, blah, 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 blah. Wow, I got this new type of like, some new type of porter. It's like, how about a perfect beer that everyone loves? Perfect Pilsner. So. I'm gonna try it out of the can because you know what? Some people drink it out of the cup. I'm gonna drink it out of the can and then I'm gonna drink it out of the cup and tell you what the difference is. So going down initially, there's sort of this, this sort of clean taste of a Pilsner and I really get that taste for the first second. And then there's sort of a somewhat smooth hops but it really ends up with a bit of a grainy finish. Uh, I don't know what the grain in here is. This is actually an unfiltered Pilsner. It's brewed in Montreal, where I am, made in small batches, made with corn and barley. So this is a corn and barley beer, which is kind of interesting because I had that multi-grain beer and the multi-grains were corn and barley, but this brand didn't say, oh, I'm a multi-grain beer. This one just said, I'm a Pilsner. From all the marketing jargon that's being used for beers, I prefer this one, straight to the point. Beer doesn't have to be pretentious. It just has to taste good and be enjoyable. It's not an expensive drink, really. It's like, a, what, a couple bucks, three bucks or something like that for a can, like, you don't have to make this, you don't have to make this fancy schmancy Champagne, it's beer, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drink for the people. A beer is a drink for the people. Uh, what else do I wanna say about it? It's pretty good. It's definitely got a very hopsy aftertaste for a Pilsner. I don't expect my Pilsners to have this much flavor profile in it. They've made it like one third IPA here. They've made it, it has like a bitter aftertaste. This beer starts off clean and then goes to a bitter aftertaste. Like, why would you make it so smooth and then just hit you in the back of the throat with bitter? What? And now I'm reading the French translation at the back. It says, lager sèche, which means dry lager. But on the front, it calls itself a pilsner. What is a dry lager and is that a pilsner? Or is a la I thought a lager and a pilsner were something different and I am too lazy to actually figure this out. So if you know the answer, write to me in the comments. Explain to me what a dry lager is and how that's different than a pilsner. Or is it the same thing? Is a dry lager a pilsner? That doesn't make sense. I thought it was like fermentation of the yeast. One of them like lagers bottom and pilsner on top. I sound like a crazy person, but there's something to do where the yeast either floats on the top or it it's at the bottom of the big thing, then you make the beer, you know? Anyways, let's give it a review. I'm gonna give it a review out of the can here. The foam, uh, the foam, the foam has subsided a bit. I'm gonna give it a little taste. It was better out of the can, I'm not gonna lie. Out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, it has kind of like a melony 
peachy, it's a peach. There's a peachy flavor. It goes, it's a clear start, a little peachy flavor, very gentle. And then it finishes off with a spike. It's like an aftertaste of bitter that kind of comes out of nowhere, it sneaks up on you. It's a sneaky beer. It doesn't remind me of a silo, so I can't really give it points for the beer reminding me of what it is. Uh, it has a few flavors going on in it, but I'm not sure if all the flavors pair well together. They have the bitter, they have this kind of peachiness to it, and then it has a really crisp start. I think if they had reduced the hops of the beer and they made it a cleaner finish, like reduce the hops, keep that nice peachy flavor in there, it's almost like a very subtle peach, it would have been a nicer beer for me. What's the rating? What's the verdict? The beer is a good 3.8 out of 5 stars. The beer, I would say, is a B to B+. Plus. I like the beer, and that's why I'm giving it a B, but it's not the best beer in the world. It's interesting. It's new, it's different, it's not the best. Alright, that's the end of day 6. Comment, subscribe, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button.